back with questions off the internet. And if anyone out there has any questions for us, you can send it to us at TOTL at abyssheadphones.com. Maybe we'll answer in our future episode. So this one reads, hi guys. Hi. My hi. second question, following the one on vinyl noise. The only well-advertised example of the adoption of acoustic metamaterial in loudspeakers is that of the KEF LS50 Meta. Do you know of any manufacturer using metamaterial absorption technology in the world of headphones, and more importantly, do you think it could be used to produce a closed back without the unwanted reflections? Well, we have some vague experience with this. In fact, we talked about this before, but our very first attempt with the planar magnetic driver of 1266 was closed. I don't know. Forgot and about that. Yeah, we kind of had something similar to what Kef is using. They have a little video describing it, and they show you pictures and stuff like that, animations. It looks cool. But uh, we did something similar to that. I don't think it was well thought out as there. Well, it was more no. layers we yeah. were doing. It yeah. was a stacked wood design, <laughs> yeah. laser cut. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. yeah it was an attempt. Yeah, where each, each layer, as you've gone deeper into it, each layer absorbed. The first layer was the least absorptive covered some for certain frequencies mm -hmm. let most through to the next layer and the next layer and the idea was that as it sifts through layers you would you would lose more and more of the frequency the various frequency um what would you call it snippets you dissipate of, the snippets energy of the over time with, yeah right till, till the very yeah. end it's the same concept as anything when you have energy and you're trying to get rid of it getting rid of it all at once tends to be much more difficult than getting rid of it slowly yeah. well in a wide banded yeah, situation. Right. In Narrow this case, band, it's easy, but yeah, in this yeah. case, we need to handle wide spectrum. Including right? we need the to handle base. everything. <laughs> that was the problem. Everything coming off the back of the driver. Yeah, yeah. low frequencies all the way up to high, and that's challenging yeah. to do. Uh, I believe they're doing this on what is it? A tweeter? The tweeter. tweeter it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a tweeter that's in it's the a center of the. Yeah, it's in the center of the woofer. Yeah, so they're not dealing with like yeah. five hertz it's to just twenty back, kilohertz. It's just the back wave of the tweeter. Yeah. Right. Now this this thing wouldn't work at that. Yeah. They they have actually a. They they put up they throw a graph up on one of their videos about the meta. Oh, it shows you like kicks in around 600 yeah. hertz and goes okay. and goes. It's very effective, very effective at 600 and up. But below that, it, it drops like our it drops pretty quickly. Right. Yeah. Well, you could which design you, these for any range. Fiberglass and stuff are similar too. When you look at a lot of the fiberglass materials, certain insulation materials, acoustic materials that are used yeah. for room acoustics or for inside speakers, they vary like that too. It's very similar. It's just this is a, I think a more compact method of doing it. I guess one good thing to bring up is why this is done and the problems with the conventional methods. So traditionally, you have on a driver that's whatever, producing audio in a headphone or pretty much anything, you have audio coming out both sides of the driver. Typically, it's pretty balanced, more or less. Front and back, basically. Yeah, so you, the side you hear, there's also audio coming out the back. That's effectively the opposite of what comes out the front. And you want to get rid of that. Otherwise, in a little shell, it bounces around, causes issues. Um, it could actually distort what's coming out the front end by bouncing around and reaching the front at a different time. So you want to ideally just dissipate it, just get rid of it. That's why open backs tend to perform better than closed because they pretty much just throw that right out the back. They don't bother dealing with it. It's pretty much just gone for the most part. The back wave goes out the backside. You just throw it out. The Unfortunately, headphone. most open backs aren't that open. So right, they're not that open. A lot of it <laughs> sticks around, and that's what right. messes with you. The yeah. trouble is, people typically stuff stuff inside of the headphone to try to deal with the frequencies that I have problems with. And it's things like this, soft things, insulation, whatever, yeah. foams, felts, et yeah. cetera. Absor absorptive materials. Yeah, and it helps absorb and dissipate this energy. However, they only work over narrow, well, relatively narrow frequency ranges. Right. So they don't work for everything. And now you're absorbing well, but maybe in this one region. And you're not absorbing in every region perfectly. And it's never perfectly even and flat. And you're absorbing in areas where you don't want to absorb. Sometimes, yeah. You can't so, pick the exact absorption characteristics. Yeah. But with a metamaterial, or at least what Kef is calling a metamaterial, which is interesting marketing term. Yeah. But what they're name. calling it... Um, you kind of can. You could engineer something that's designed to absorb exactly the frequencies you want in the right quantities. Yeah, in more or less a flat response. More or less. Well, you were watching. We watched their video on it on their website. It was kind of cool. It's a short video, but it, yeah. if you know what you're looking at, it's pretty obvious what they're doing. Well, they you do know. reference uh, that it would take a, like a meter long tube or whatever to do the same thing. So right. I guess the uh, the best uh, example of that would be the Bowers and Wilkins Nautilus speakers. Yeah. Very clear cut from the outside what's going on with them. 
each driver has its own tube at right. its own length and and yeah, they, as you get down to the like, I believe it's a 15-inch driver, and you need a huge tube. So <laughs> Basically, they, a yeah, conch yeah, shell. Yeah, everything's got its own <laughs> I don't even individual yeah. tube. What would you call that shell? It's not a conch shell. There's it's a, a name for it's it. It's a yeah. circular, uh, yeah, Nautilus. Yeah, it's a Nautilus. Well, I guess it is a it Nautilus. Is a Nautilus. Yeah. Yes, of course. Okay. Which probably follows the uh, golden, the golden rule, right? The golden of, ratio. The yeah, golden yes, ratio. Of course. Yeah. Right. Thank you, George Curtis, for for. Uh, he he's always followed that rule with a lot of his cable designs and so on. It's yeah, a, even the conductor layup, which is interesting. Yeah, yeah. so there is something about that, I guess, in nature that s- strikes a chord. Ha, Apparently, ha. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. But uh, that's the easiest one—the view from the outside, though. Yeah, because uh, uh, with the cap speakers, you obviously can't tell what's going well, on. Well, that's true, <laughs> and you know, in looking at it too, you'll see what extremes you'd have to go through to deal with the back wave on a driver and uh well in the bass especially yeah right and no, especially in low frequencies and that something to explain that's the hardest thing to absorb regardless of whether it's a small device or a room you start dropping below 150 hertz or so or even below 100 you know you need you need foam three foot you need thick a lot of volume to, to, to absorb you know 30, 30 to 50 hertz range is really difficult those are trick you can't just do it with you can't just throw a piece of foam on the wall and absorb the, that that range. You know, you need tuned devices. It'd be nice if you could. It'd be nice if you could. <laughs> put yeah. this foam in there. Some or? people do it. I've seen like the people put in these corner, uh, corner things in a room, and we're talking they're out three, four feet, mm. and they just stuff the thing with wool. And the idea is, you know, sooner or later it'll, <laughs> it'll absorb. It. There's so much of yeah, it. Yeah, if, if you have the, the low space, frequency yeah. energy going through, will yeah, will yeah. slow down at some point. You know, doing and, that in uh, a headphone is very problematic. Yeah. So. Not yeah, quite practical. <laughs> and I guess we could explain that briefly to people that don't understand, but what you're, what you're doing with absorption is, technically speaking, is you're taking an acoustic waveform, wavefront, and converting it to heat. You're, you're, right. you're somehow taking it, and you have to slow it down, and in, basically you're offering resistance to an acoustic wave, and the resistance dissipates it as heat. Of course, it's not something you're going to sit there and yeah, measure, well. but you know it doesn't make the room hot, but that, that's what effectively is happening. Yeah. yeah, it's trivial amounts of energy, but yeah. you got to deal with it somewhere. Otherwise, it comes back, bounces around, causes all kinds of issues in the room or your headphone or your speaker. So dealing with it is a big problem. And what CAF is doing is, is interesting. It's a different approach to what I think is intrinsically obvious to anyone in the art, but they're implementing it in a very different manner. So that's unique for sure. But um, yeah, I think other people have likely attempted this, I would assume in the headphone space. I don't know anyone going to that great length because the trouble is it would be very challenging to fit a broad spectrum absorber like that. Well, that's the issue. Into a headphone because you, you need to go way down low all the way up top. And the higher frequencies, it doesn't take up that much space to absorb. But the low, unfortunately, it does. Yeah, it would have to be a lot thicker. It's just kind of the and math of it. We were just talking about that too where they're, you know, they're, they're dealing with, if you look at their the construction of this, this metal absorber they're making it's a sandwich it's um you know we'll, we'll have a picture up here but it's mm-hmm. a basically it's 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 two plates with with a certain thickness of foam or something in between yeah well yeah the, and the plates form a tube then yeah so right. it's just bouncing around that tube. and everything that's bouncing is going back and forth between the plates if it does bounce and is absorbed by the the foam layer in between and the other thing we fig- we're looking at it too is it's it's really made specific for that driver that their tweeter yeah. it's made it's made because the tweeter and the woofer are one in the same cabinet so you know if you just let it fire into the rear of a cabinet like most speakers do there's no good way to isolate the back wave of the tweeter from the woofer yeah they come from the same point yeah right <laughs> same driver so here they kind of made a, basically a custom sandwiched absorber that deals with the back wave of the tweeter and isolates it at the same time isolates yeah. it from the the woofer you know, because woofers will, if you if you load them into the same cabinet, the woofer will modulate the tweeter, right? You're it's pressurizing a cabinet, right. so the tweeter's going to, if the, if it's open to the back, the tweeter's going to move too, a little bit. It's little it's, bit. it's affected by the bass frequencies, and you know, you, you normally don't want that in a higher end speaker. Yeah, <laughs> you don't want that in any speaker. But no. I would assume they just do this to create a larger internal area. Right, like the the sole motivation is just so you don't need a divider, which means for the size of the speaker, you have more internal volume. It's a bookshelf. So right. yeah, that's In a what bookshelf, you're doing. that's right. important. There's no good way to deal with it. But 
you could do it in a big speaker. You could do it just by putting a divider there. And you, as long as you have enough volume on both sides, if you just have a standard two-way design, you could totally get away without this. It's just this is a novel approach to kind of give you more space inside, yeah. like a TARDIS, I guess. Good, good marketing, mm. yeah, like a TARDIS. Yeah, it's bigger yeah. on the inside. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I guess if, if you have unlimited space, then you wouldn't necessarily need to do something like this. Yeah. I mean, you just separate everything. You would just put a long tube <laughs> off the, the, <laughs> yeah. the center of that driver Make it and, a and just dissipate, and the, and dissipate the, the back wave of the tweeter and, but yeah. at some distance. That doesn't work in a bookshelf. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good idea. Now, the question was, can you implement this or does anyone implement this in the headphones? And I think... Um, you partly answered that. Kind of yes and no. You can't. You can't really do the. This won't help with the bass frequencies. Yeah. It, it doesn't have anywhere to really go there, below you know five to five hundred hertz or so is really difficult, and that's with a closed back. That's kind of the biggest problem is bass. If you, if you don't bass. get rid of that bass back wave, it cancels out the front bass wave and you wind up with no bass. Yeah. Which is a problem with closed back, I think, in general. You know? In general, yeah. It's yeah. very challenging. The bigger the volume you have behind the driver, the easier it is to deal with. So that's why a lot of times you see closed backs that are just physically large because it's easier. Uh, it's very difficult to make a very, very small closed back perform exceptional. I guess the biggest problem is in a headphone application, especially in a planar magnetic where the driver is physically large, it's like the size of a device you would need to actually be effective would right. be so big. It would be bigger than the driver itself. Yeah. So you'd have like a... <laughs> yeah, you have a headphone like this, and you've got a, a meta absorber yeah. that's three times the diameter of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah so that's It would be very effective, but at that point, is it really closed anymore? Because it's all the benefits you were looking for are gone. It's gigantic. Yeah, right. So if you're only looking to minimize leakage, well, you could just go in a sealed room, and that works pretty well too, right? <laughs> and you're you're kind of getting there with <clears throat> with something like that yeah. uh, to solve all your problems for you on the back of the headphone. It's it's tough in the volume allotted. Yeah, and I think what we found, uh, what we're finding too, as we complete our close back project, is that you're better off with it using a combination of absorption and diffusion. Yep. And uh, you know, and if you can reuse that energy, and especially in the low frequencies, and, and keep it, or it, in some way, it's even better. But primarily, yeah, in the low frequencies in a closed headphone, you, you're kind of trying to get rid of the back wave entirely. Um, you know, that's the challenge. Dealing with the highs is, isn't so bad. You could, well, there's all kinds of ways to do that. Basically, what they're doing in that design is already done in headphones. Most headphones on the market, especially the high-end headphones, have some degree of design of that nature. They do it in a very different manner, and it's not an entirely sealed system because they have different reasons for doing it. But it's not to say it's not done. It is. It's just they're targeting specific frequencies that are a problem in their enclosure. You see all kinds of like weird bumps, nodules, and wave alignment type yeah. deals to try to direct energy where you want it to, or you have some sort of stuffing inside the shell or foam or some sort of uh, fibrous material that's, that's designed to target a specific frequency range. So it's basically the same thing. Uh, it's just what CAF is doing is designed to cover more or less the entire frequency range that tweeter puts out well more importantly it's made specifically for that particular concentric yeah. driver they for have that there. very device so it's not really the bottom line is you can't transpose it to it's not easy to transpose to a, a full range well not the same That's thing it'd yeah. have to be custom made for yeah. each application yeah and again we're probably back to that layer thing like we were talking about right. before mm -hmm. where you're, some frequencies deal with that and some another device deals with the lower frequencies and then you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're compiling things into a small package that you can't fit so right. yeah as get, of yet nobody does something on that level because it's just yeah. physically too large yeah there's, yeah there's not enough room so that's it that's as good as we could describe i guess in a rather lengthy video it turned out to be yeah. so anyway everyone thank you very much for watching and please subscribe to us and give us a thumbs up anytime take care <laughs>